Hi, hope you're well. This video is requested by Miss Bunny, Sakura Dream, and OMB123. So I'm going to be doing a really simple Halo Saray background in this video. It's going to be mostly a tutorial. So I am using a program called My Paint. It's free to use. It's available on Windows and Mac. It can be a little bit buggy on Mac, so preferably use it on Windows if you can. If you can't, then there's a program called Wine that you can put the program in and then load it as a Windows program in Mac. And I think there's some tutorials online how to do that. So I've already gone ahead and added the template into the program. I have locked the layer for the template because I don't want to draw on the template, okay? But I've got layer 1 and 2 open here, so I'm going to use layer 1 to do some sketching. So basically what I would probably advise when you start off doing anything, whether it's a golden apple coat or hillis ray, is to just sketch in um, to start with. So what we'll do is we'll just start doing a basic, basic, basic sketch, all right? Nothing particularly fancy, just to sort of give us a guideline. So whatever you want to draw, whether you want to draw a castle in there or a dragon or whatever you feel like. So it doesn't have to be particularly neat per se, it just has to, you know, give a basic idea. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these as rather large, large hedges. So these are going to be green eventually, and this is going to be our sky in this tutorial. And this bit here is going to be a path. So we're just going to do something really simple. All right, so I'm going to go to layer two now, and I'm going to start off with just getting our basic path set down. So I'm going to go with this pen for now. Now you can see that I'm going over the edge here, right? And I know that probably is like, oh my god, no, you're going everywhere. Don't worry, because as I said, the template's not being affected, so it doesn't really matter. But I don't really like that brush, so I'm going to change the brush. I think one of the things is you've got to experiment with these brushes and find brushes that you quite like um, when you're doing this, because I find generally it takes a little bit of time with these things. And I found that when I did a lot of coats in this program, I started to find brushes that I liked I liked what they did and I liked how it looked, so it does take a little bit of time. Now I'm going to go with a little bit of darker colour in the edges just. There, right, now I'm going to go with really some really really dark green. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush a bit, the brush is a bit big. So really whatever you're doing these things, it's to be aware of where the horse is because with Halo's Res, I think it really is important, especially in the creation space, that people can see where the horse is and how it looks in retrospect to the rest of it. Because if they can't really see their horse being inside that Halo's background, it's not going to really appeal. So I think it's very important that you kind of, whatever you're drawing, is to make it immersive. Make it look like the horse is really in there and not just a case of, you know, it's kind of in there. So we're going to kind of go with the fact that the hedge just keeps going. So... Um, now this isn't going to be great, it's not going to be fantastic, I'm probably not going to finish it, I just want to give you a rough idea, uh, because like a lot of my coats that I've worked on, um, I think the one that took the longest took, now that wasn't the background, but it took 40 hours roughly. Some of my other ones have taken around maybe half that or something or close to it, so it takes a long time to do a lot of these. It depends though how complicated you make it for yourself as well, you could go for something really pixely looking and really game like and really cartoony. And it probably will still take us just as long to do. It's just that it may take you slightly less time. I quite like this brush at the minute because I kind of feel like it's giving us a sort of a leafy sort of green sort of effect. Looks like it might be a hedge. So we'll just kind of keep going with that. And then I'm going to get some darker. I'm going to go with some really, some really dark black down the bottom. Although it's not coming through particularly dark. Let's see if we can reduce the opacity a bit. Yeah, that's okay. That's a bit harsher. So do you have a play around with the brushes and so forth when you're doing these things? Because it will sort of help. Now you're probably thinking I probably should have done the sky first, but I will show you why I haven't done the sky in a minute. I'm going to just keep sort of playing with this brush a bit. Now there are certain brush types that you're not allowed to use um, with horse. I think it's custom brushes. Now I'm not going to be submitting this, and I just want to give you a rough idea of what you can do. I think this is one of the watercolour brushes. So I think this one's alright. But I think when it, I think the custom brushes, like for example in GIMP, if I remember right, um, I'm trying to think which custom brushes in GIMP aren't allowed. There was one that, like here's one that does leaves for example. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be allowed to submit that. If anybody is, you know, sure, tell me. Because it's been, I haven't used GIMP in a very, very long time. Um, so I'm not entirely 100% sure, to be completely honest, as to whether... Um, that is still the case, but I think it might be. So do go and have a look properly at the um, at all the different rules around submitting these coats and things because there, there are lots of rules around submitting Halo's Ray coats and so forth and you need 
to kind of familiarize yourself. Now, one thing I will say, which was a bit silly on my part, is I didn't put the path on a different layer. And in hindsight, that was a really, really stupid idea. So this is one of the things not to do, is to pay attention to where you're putting your layers. And I'm just going to keep going because I've already done so much of that hedge. So I'm just going to keep going with it. And I'm not going to worry too much about it. So what I won't do is I won't be doing any detail, like anything really detailed in this video. This is really just something really basic to do because there's so many really fantastic tutorials out there on how to like do things much more detailed and you know so forth. And I consider myself to be somebody who enjoys doing artwork, but I'm not. I don't think I'm particularly good at it. So it's um, more for my own enjoyment, I guess. And uh, don't get too hung up on you know some of your first creations. Don't be afraid to take critique. Like one of the biggest things I think at the start is like. If you don't take or take with your work, then you can't get better. And I think that really became apparent um, to me at one point. One of the other things I'll just quickly mention, because I haven't really mentioned it, probably should have mentioned it before, was think of where your light source is coming from as well when you're doing backgrounds. Um, it's different if it's a night scene and there's no moon or something like that, but let's just um, let's see. That's layer two. Oh yeah, layer one was that. So let's add another layer. Um, so let's add, we'll call, this will be layer three and we'll just label it sky. And then we'll do another layer and I'm going to call it layer four and I'm going to call it light source. Okay, uh, I'm going to rename this one so uh, hedges plus path base because I don't want to do any more on the path um, in that layer. I'll probably do use another layer. So this is our pencil layer so we'll put in pencil for this one. And then we'll just add one more, I think. So we'll go with layer five and we'll go with path. Now remember that you can move these around. Like um, I'll just I'll show you what I mean by this. Is if you're using a program where you can move things, like if I let's go with this brush for a moment. I'm gonna make it really, really blue for a second. Um, you see if I go in there right now, I'm drawing over everything, right? I am drawing over absolutely everything. But all I have to do is move that one. Um, you know, I can move it back and forward, basically. So if we just quickly remove it again. So let's go to layer three. So this one, yeah, this one's on top. So I'll probably move that back a bit in a minute. So I don't want to go too far with it. I want to kind of keep it on the, on the actual part of it here. So there's a really basic sky. Let's go with, let's use that brush again. We'll just make it a little bit more maybe this. No, I don't like that color for it. Let's go maybe a little bit more, yeah, a lighter. Mm, still, be, you know, do play around with the opacity and the size of the brush because it does help. So that's better. That merges in much more. I like that much better. Okay. Because it was too harsh a minute ago. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move it behind the hedges like so. So the hedge is in front of it. Now if I just hide the template, you can kind of get a rough idea there actually as we hide the template. You can sort of see, yeah, it's a path, there's hedges, we've got the sky. Do you know, we can go in and start, um, you know, doing more things to this. And one of the things I'm going to kind of do just quickly to kind of give you a rough idea of one of the things I kind of forgot to mention was when you're deciding, like say for example, the sun's over here, right? Um, I'll just remove that again. What you kind of want to be paying attention to is where your light is coming from. And the reason this I think is so important, like, for example, if the sun was coming from, let's just, I can use this, let's see. All right, let's, let's pretend the sun's coming from this way. Okay, there's our light source. Okay, let's just add another layer really quick. So layer six, okay. So say our light source is coming from that way. So one of the things that you wanna be doing whenever you're um, trying to sort of get the light and shade is be aware that there's probably going to be some kind of shadow over here because the sun's coming from behind this hedge and that probably means that there's going to be some light towards this one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep that quite large in size but i'm going to go now it's still too bright let's bring that down again we'll reduce the hardness as well so you know you could just be aware of where your light is going to be and there's going to be certain bits of it that are lighter than others now it's not really coming out how i want it at the minute so i think maybe that color's a bit too harsh, so let's maybe go with a lighter. That's a little bit better because it doesn't, it's not as harsh, it's not coming out as harshly there. So, you know, that perhaps there's going to be bits of hedge that are sticking out and they're going to look, you know, a lot lighter, whereas there's going to be other bits that are going to look darker. It's not necessarily that this hedge is going to be 
completely lighter. My first off, what I would say is work with some light bits, so some lighter areas, then start going with your finer detail. Now, probably the top of this hedge is going to be lighter on this side because the sun's coming over this hedge. So there's still going to be some light areas on this, but most of them are probably going to be on the top of the hedge, like so. So you can go in and sort of do really basic um, highlights on these different things. And then, for example, if we want to just add a little bit of light. No, that's not, that's not light enough yet for me. Hold on. Bring that down even more. You know, I could still add some in. I don't think it's necessarily just, it's not, you can sort of see that there's light areas on this side, for example, but they're not as bright as this side. So I'm just going to remove those again because I'm not totally happy with them yet. You know, don't be afraid to kind of, you know, draw on it and then be like, no, actually, I don't like that. So there you can kind of see we've got the lighter areas. So now what I'd want to do is I'd want to go in and add some darker bits. Now the reason I want to add some more darker bits is because one of the things is because the light source is coming from this direction, you're going to get sort of harsher dark on this side because the light's hitting there. So these sort of darker areas are going to be that bit darker. So let's just bring the opacity up a little bit. See, no, we want that a wee bit more. It's not hard enough for us yet. What about this? Mm, no, I don't like that. That's not what I wanted. Uh, maybe we should go in with a different colour. And be prepared to sort of play around with different colours. Okay, that's coming out brown and I don't want brown. So let's try something else. Let's try a dark purple, maybe. No, that's not what we want. But do play around with your colours. You know, see what works, see what doesn't. Like that, that blue, it's like, it's not a dark green. It's like a dark navy blue. That I think looks better. So I'm going to bring the opacity up and we'll take the hardness down. And I think that works better. So let's try that now. Um, Going to reduce the radius a wee bit because I sort of want these darker bits kind of um, underneath some of these shadows to just kind of make it like pop out a wee bit more. And I'm going to darken this down here as well because I feel like this needs to be darker. So let's just kind of add these wee bits in just to sort of see. But you can play around with it, play around with your colours, you know, test things out. Not everything's going to work. But some of it's going to work really well, probably for you. But there's just a really simplistic note. I'm going to remove that. Um, like, there's there's what we had a minute ago, okay? Just as a bland as it is, okay? And that's it with some shading in it. Now, really, really, that's very early shading. I mean, if we wanted to start getting really um, fussy with our shading, let's just... I'll just show you how fussy we could get with our shading. Let's go for a really... We'd start to go for much harsher colours, but we'd start to win a lot... Um, a lot of what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, a lot of finer details. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna randomly squiggle for a minute so you can sort of see what I mean. So there, for example, would be where we'd be starting to bring in much harsher light because obviously with light and dark you get shadows that kind of disperse and then you get very harsh shadows and then you get you know very harsh light and then very low light. So you've got to kind of like do that whenever you're doing this. Um, this is a bit too thin, really. But it's, you're sort of getting the, the idea of what I mean. It's just, it's really... See, that there is too harsh at the minute. You know, it comes out far too, far too much. So let's um, reduce the hardness, maybe. And that was sort of be closer on to what I want, but not exactly. Um, trying to think of the brush that I want. I know there's a brush that I want for this. I might try that again, actually, just a bit larger. Eh, it's not far off what I want. Right, let's just quickly over the tops of them. So you can kind of see what I mean. This is a wee bit too much, but you kind of get a rough idea of uh, where you could really start to make things sort of sit out. And then you could, you know, I could go ahead and put flowers on this and make it a lot, you know, more obvious. Now with the path, let's just go back to the path for a bit. I don't think we've got anything on the path at the moment, so let's go with this. Let's go a bit harsher on the opacity with this. Um, so. As I said earlier, because we've got our um, sun coming from this way, this is probably this side is going to be a lot darker. Let's put this. Do we want this above? No, we want this underneath the hedges. So, you know, we're going to kind of bring that forward a wee bit. So on this side, we're probably going to have a lot more dark. Um, you know, we can kind of. Oop, that wasn't exactly what I wanted. 
No, hold on. We want that to come out a bit more. There we go. We sort of want. We don't want uh, too obvious what's going on down there. So, all right. Let's say I want to reduce the harshness and reduce the opacity there. Sort of start to merge that in a wee bit. I suppose it depends too, is how you harsh you want that. Because I kind of liked actually that sort of harsher shadow line because it looked like if it was really obvious that the sun was coming out there, that would be kind of a a nice way to put it in. Um, then obviously you can go in and and do your lighter bits as well. So you know, make certain parts of the path lighter and so forth compared to other bits. But um, I'll quickly do a little bit of cloud in the sky. Just a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Let's see. Um, no, I don't like how that's coming up. Right, let's try. Let's go with a harsher. No, it's too harsh. It's far too harsh. Right. Did this. No, that's too chalky looking. Um, right, well, I'll do a basic cloud. We can do a really basic cloud and then we'll go from there. So, there's our basic cloud, you know. I tend to find that there's actually a lot more colour in clouds when you sort of look at them more closely. Now, we sort of have our, our sunlight. Now, this source of light over here, you know, I'm going to delete that arrow. It's just I'm cutting it there for the purposes of of this. But, like, for example, we'd be aware of where... Um, the sun was and how that would be reflecting on the clouds um, for us so let's reduce the actual we'll bring that up a bit once again it's the same thing with it. it's the same story with the clouds really you want to have darker bits and then these light, lighter harsher parts of it as well so i'll just add the template back in so you can kind of see so that's a rough idea um there so let's just quickly uh, i want the eraser for this there we go so light source. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete our effects on. So you can see this. So that's basically a really, really, really simplistic tutorial. Um, so I'm not gonna be. I don't think I'm gonna be submitting this or anything. I just wanted to give you some really quick idea and not have too long a video because I don't want to try and <laughs> do a tutorial of a 40 hour drawing because it's just really not easy to do that and it takes quite a well, while. I probably will do a more in depth tutorial on. Um, drawing horses because the thing is with the halo spray if you see something out there that you'd really love to draw as a background there are some fantastic videos out there on how to do that and people who are much more knowledgeable and know so many more techniques than i do but this was just to kind of give you as a rough idea what you could do you know go sketch it out get a rough idea play around with the different brushes experiment with the colors colors are one of the things that i really really failed to understand a lot don't be afraid to take critique you know because critique really really helps like if there's somebody on your server where you're doing Halo Spray backgrounds who, who really does say things that criticize your work, don't automatically take offense to it because sometimes they're going to see things that you can't see. They're going to say, you know, you maybe need to add, you know, harsher light. or like, Now, at the same time, there are going to be things that you may not agree with and you think, no, I like it as it is. But don't be afraid to try it, what they're saying, and see actually if it, it makes a difference to your work. So um, thank you to Miss Bonnie, OMB123, and Sakura Dream for requesting the video. I hope you've had a lovely day, guys. Bye.